out, Ash. Me too, buddy, me too. I mean, my sister just turned into a demon. And a pretty f***ing foul mouth one as well. So, it's another Road to Retro Hell episode, and not only that, it's another sidestep on the path to Retro Hell, because the next episode was supposed to be about faces of evil. I just wonder what Ganon's up to. However, I have stared into the face of evil with this game already, thanks to a Patreon request, and it's forced me off-road. Incidentally, the last video I had to do a Road to Retro Hell sidestep for was Friday the 13th on the C64. What is it with horror film franchises and the Commodore 64? Why do they make me do this? Much like that game, The Evil Dead is a game that effectively doesn't really do that much to match itself up with the film that spawned it. To be fair to this game, we do have a shack and an obsession with closing windows and doors, and we do have our lead character and his four friends, and we have a little bit of disembodied things going on, but outside of that, the stuff that ties it to its cinematic inspiration are threadbare at best. I was, in fact, going to take a look at the original film and do some comparisons, but honestly, there's no point. The Evil Dead on C64 doesn't even really have that much to talk about. There's not an awful lot there. In terms of history and details, the game was written by one Colin Tanner, who seems to have just sort of stopped after that, and it was published by Palace Software, probably most famous for the Cauldron series. Incidentally, on the ZX Spectrum, Evil Dead didn't even get an official release. It was bunged on the B-side of the Cauldron cassette as a bonus extra. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing there, hold on. Bonus. It doesn't particularly matter which micro you play Evil Dead on, they're all much of a muchness, and they were all also strangely well received. Commodore Horizons magazine stated, There aren't any great surprises, but it's the kind of thing which can keep you playing for hours, which is complete bollocks, and gave the game an overall score of 8 out of 10. Popular Computing Weekly initially sounded a little disappointed. Nobody gets raped by a tree and there isn't much gore. But then it goes on to say, You won't be disappointed. What is important is the thought that has gone into the design of the game, which, as you'll find out, is also complete bollocks. Maybe it's due to the game's age. It was released in 1984 after all, but I have literally no idea what these reviewers were so wowed about. The general conceit of the game is a fair one, but actually playing it? There's just nothing about it that you can really consider as fun. Let's start with the good, because there are a few good things. The in-game tutorial is nice to see, even if it is incredibly lengthy. The general summation is, pick up weapons and use those to kill things. Kill things to get points. When you get enough points, the Necronomicon appears and you throw it in the fire to win. You can, as well, open and close windows and doors, which is a largely pointless endeavour, but we'll get back to that. One thing you will notice is that the developer calls the enemies Green Mutants, which, I mean, I guess they are in the game, but they're certainly not in the film. They're Deadites. Why on earth he thought they were mutants is anyone's guess. I can only presume he fell asleep partway through watching it. In terms of the game itself, I like the idea of what it is you're trying to do, it's just that it largely doesn't work in the way that's intended. You're told, for instance, that you have to close the windows and doors to make sure the spooky demon monster cloud doesn't get in, but you move so slowly that there's practically no way of getting to those doors or windows in time, and just to make matters even more confusing, they can seemingly just open at random anyway, or the human characters who aimlessly wander around will do it because they're absolutely mindless. And now, here's where things start to fall apart pretty rapidly. The only way to score points is to kill deadites, and deadites will only appear when the spooky demon monster cloud touches a human person, which means that wandering around and closing those doors and windows is largely a moot point anyway. So you need to have them open in order to make anything progress. You could argue that keeping certain openings closed would allow you to funnel the enemies better, but you'd be wrong for two reasons. One, as I've already mentioned, Ash is too slow and cumbersome for that to be of any use anyway. And two, everything you do uses energy. Everything that is apart from standing completely still. This means if you spend your entire time running around closing windows, you'll be half dead before you've even got to the point of fighting a deadite. Are you starting to see an issue here? That leaves you with the basic gameplay loop. Find a weapon, pick up the weapon, kill a deadite. The deadite will split off into multiple body parts, kill those, do the same with all the others. 
and then the gameplay resets. All four humans are back and your energy is restored. Or maybe it's not, I can't remember. And by this point, I was so bored by the bare basic bollocks on offer, I simply didn't care to check. There's no real tactics available to the player here from what I can gather. The AI is wonky and useless. The setting is bare bones and largely just gets in the way of Ash's broad shoulders. Seriously, just getting through a doorway feels like trying to move a forklift truck through a tight gap. There's a tight, restrictive feel to all of the controls. Weapons just appear randomly and just as randomly disappear into the ether. The entire game feels like a half-thought idea and you can feel it in each and every step of the gameplay. It's just boring. It's boring, and that's certainly not something you can level at the film that inspired it. In terms of where it places in the list then, it's a tough one because it's not egregiously awful, it just feels unambitious and lacking in any real flair. It doesn't do a great job of resembling its movie counterpart, but you know what, at least it kind of tried to. There's a concept there, it's just one that doesn't work. All that being said though, it's pretty much as entertaining as Friday the 13th was, and I guess I'm only putting it above that game because one, it's over with quicker, and two, at least it tried. You're not gonna leave me here, are you? Are you ass? <laughs>